Welcome to Choice Classic Radio. Like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and help keep this show alive by donating at choiceclassicradio.com. For more of your favorite old-time radio shows, join us on our companion podcast, Choice Classic Radio Detectives, where we bring to you tales from the greatest detective shows the golden age of radio had to offer. And now, with 463 episodes made, broadcast on CBS Radio from 1942 to 1955, we bring to you The Whistler. Signal Gasoline. Signal, the new gasoline you can prove is superior. Signal Oil Company and your neighborhood signal dealer bring you another curious story by The Whistler. Tonight, phone call from death. I am The Whistler. And I know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. Always a bridesmaid, never a bride. You know the old saying. But have you ever thought how that thought must rankle in the minds of women to whom it is applied? Ellen Livesey, for instance. Ellen always seemed to lose out with the men she set her cap for. And who can say what emotion plagued her now that she could no longer be called a young woman? She didn't show it, of course. Even when men came to her about their troubles with other women. Like Glenn Reed. It's maddening, Ellen. What am I going to do about her? There's nothing much anyone can do when a girl falls in love. Don't say that. She's not in love with Paul Carroll. She can't be. Glenn, pull yourself together. I'm sorry. I know what Sheila means to you, but you can't deny reality, Glenn. The fact is, Sheila's met someone else, and there isn't anything you can do about it. Two months ago, she was going to marry me. I didn't know that. Well, not a definite promise, but until Carroll came along... What has she told you about him? Glenn, you can hardly expect me to tell You've you what... You've got to tell me, Ellen. I've got to know. I don't think I have to violate a confidence for anyone. But you said she's in love with him. How do you know? Did she tell you? Yes, she told me. I don't believe it. Really, Glenn, if you're going to behave this oh, way... I... I know I'm a fool. But, Ellen, if you knew what all this is doing to me... I think I know. Ever since Sheila met Paul Carroll, she's been infatuated with him. And I can understand why. But why can't she see her money's made a hit with him, too? Oh, Glenn, lack of money doesn't mean anything to Sheila. I've certainly never been wealthy. Why, the jobs I've had. Dime store clerk, telephone operator, stenographer, and now secretary. Yet Sheila and I have always been close friends. Very close. Ellen, I'd do anything. Humiliate myself, anything, if she'd only let me talk to her. Do you want me to call her for you, Glenn? Oh, no. No, I... I wouldn't want you to do that. Yes, you would. When you called me this afternoon, I knew that's what you wanted me to do. I'll call her right now. Well, well, all right, if it isn't too much trouble. You know it isn't. Oh, that's a silly thing to do. I started to dial the wrong number. Well, good heavens. Hello? Why, Sheila, what a coincidence. I was just trying to get you. Sheila, what is it? What's the matter, Ella? Sheila, I can't understand you. Sheila! Sheila! Ellen, what's wrong? What's happened? I don't know exactly. She seemed terrified, something about someone trying to break into her apartment. And then her voice seemed smothered, and, and we were cut oh, off. Oh, good Lord, we'd better get over there. Well, I'll call the police. Maybe they can get there quicker. Oh, I hope I'm mistaken, Glenn. Sheila simply has to be all right. Well, we'll soon find out. Oh, Glenn, wait. What? Down the hall, the patrolman. Standing guard outside Sheila's door. Oh, Glenn, do you, do you think... Come on. Well, we'll let you up. We're friends of Miss Blaine, officer. We're going inside. Oh, are you? 
Well, I don't know how you got by downstairs. Nobody tried to stop us, officer. We simply came right up. Why can't we see Miss Blaine? What's happened? Just a minute now. Just a well, what's minute. What's going on in there? What's wrong? I said hold your horses, young fella. Wilson, get downstairs and take... Who are these people? Well, sir, that's what I was just My about... name's Ellen Livesey. I called police headquarters about Miss Blaine. Oh, yes, Miss Livesey. I'm Captain Hazlitt of the Homicide Division. Homicide? Captain, what's happened? Sheila Blaine has two bullets in the back of her head. She's dead. Wait a minute. Have you tried new Signal Gasoline, that new super fuel that offers you premium performance at no extra cost? If you have, you know what an amazing new motor fuel it is. Not just pre-war quality, not just an improvement on old-style gasoline, but an entirely new type of super fuel that embodies in one giant stride the amazing advances of wartime chemistry. For Signal is the new gasoline you can prove is superior. With new signal in your tank, you immediately notice, one, quicker starting the moment you touch the button. Two, faster pickup. You actually feel it. Three, higher anti-knock. Just listen to that old motor purr, even on the steepest hills. And four, you'll find you go farther than ever on new signal, because you'll be shifting less, enjoying more economical high gear miles. For you folks who like proof, there's a scientific reason why new signal gives you all these advantages. And I'll be back later to tell you about that. But for the best proof of all, let a tank full of new signal talk for itself in your own car. Let the quicker starting, faster pickup, higher anti-knock, and longer mileage show you why new signal is the new post-war gasoline you can prove is superior. And now, back to the whistler. And Livesey, this time it looks as if you won't have even to be a bridesmaid. Your best friend, Sheila Blaine, is dead. What kind of emotion does that call up in you? Are you properly heartbroken? Or is there a faint smile of triumph in your face? The following morning, when Captain Hazlitt called you, Glenn Reed, and Paul Carroll to his office at police headquarters... Yeah, <clears throat> now I'll tell you frankly, we haven't developed a single lead on Miss Blaine's murder since last night. You three seem to have been her closest friends, though, so if there's anything you can tell me... What do you want to know, Captain? Well, you've already told me how Miss Blaine called you. Uh, by the way, I'd like to thank you for calling headquarters so promptly. Oh, I thought it was the thing to do, Captain. As I understand it, you knew Miss Blaine intimately. Yes, we've been friends since we were in school. Had her life ever been threatened before? There was no reason for anybody to threaten her, Captain. Ah. You were with Miss Livesey when Miss Blaine called. That's right, at 7.30. And you, Mr. Carroll... You were at a movie at that time. Well, from what I've heard, I must have been inside the Regal Theater when she... when it happened. Miss Blaine made her phone call at 7.30. Apparently, she was killed immediately after that. What time did you get home? Just after 11. One of your men was waiting for me. What time did you enter the theater? Just after 7. Wasn't that a little early for you to attend a movie? I don't see why. I hadn't anything to do last evening, Decided to drop in as I was passing by. Can you prove you were there? Now look here, if you're implying I had anything to do with this, Someone's I Someone's would... been murdered, Mr. Carroll. It's my job to try to find out who did it. I have to start with those who might have done it. And you mean to say I'm one of them? Why not? Well, what motive would I have? Motives are usually and can easily be found. Does that mean Miss Livesey and Reed are under suspicion, too? Everyone's under suspicion, Mr. Carroll. We suspect everyone at this stage of the game... I went to the Regal Theater last night, Hazlitt. I was there from 7 until 10.30. We can check it anyway. How long had you known Miss Blaine? Six weeks. You were, uh, quite friendly? We were going to be married. You're a liar. Uh, just a minute, Mr. Reed. He's lying. They weren't going to get married. Glenn, please, please control yourself. Oh, we just have his word for it. Sheila never told anyone. Get hold of yourself, Reed. I take it you were, uh, on friendly terms with Miss Blaine, too. I was in love with her. 
And Carol says he was going to marry her. I told you he was lying. You're talking pretty carelessly, Reed. I'd watch myself if I were you. What are you doing, warning me? I'm telling you to use a little common sense. Because if you don't, I'll, I'll get what Sheila got. Huh? Are you Sit dirty down, little down? Take it easy. You're both under a strain, but so is Miss Livesey. Now, I'm ready to tell you whatever I can, Captain. No, thanks. I suggest you all go home now. But I thought you had questions to ask us. I'll do that later. One at a time. Then we're free to go now? Yes. Well, what yes. about Sheila's murder? Is this all you intend to do about it? We'll go on checking into it, Mr. Reed. But she's dead. Don't you understand that? Somebody's killed her. Somebody's got to pay for that. We'll go on checking, Mr. Reed. Haven't you any ideas or, or theories at all? Right now, I'd say the coroner's jury will have to hand in a verdict of homicide by person or persons unknown. We get those cases every so often. Sneak thieves, intruders, surprised by their victims. Kill, get away. Sheila wasn't killed by any sneak thief. How do you know? I don't know for sure, but it couldn't have been that. Go home and get some sleep, Mr. Reed. I'll call you if I want you. Thanks for your cooperation, everyone. Thank you, Captain. Paul. Yes, Helen. Will you be good enough to take me home now? <laughs> It's all quite a mystery, isn't it, Ellen? The police get nowhere, and soon it's almost forgotten. Yes, even you almost forget it. Because of a new anxiety, a new emotion. Your anger because you haven't seen Paul Carroll since that day he drove you home from the police station. With Sheila out of the way, you thought he'd be around much sooner, didn't you? You thought you could wait. But every day you're away from him. Well... He's very much in your mind the afternoon you face Wilson Andrews in his office. Wilson Andrews, Sheila's attorney. Before Miss Blaine's will is admitted to probate, Miss Liversey, I'd like you to read it, or if you prefer, I'll read it to you to give you the gist of its contents. Mr. Andrews, I... are you telling me I'm one of Sheila's heirs? Her only heir, my dear. Oh, no, that isn't possible. Surely you don't object oh, to... Oh, but I couldn't. I couldn't take her money. My dear Miss Liversey... She wanted you to inherit her estate. And surely you can use $30,000. Well, I... I don't know what to say. And she was quite fond of you, Miss Liversey. I'll always remember her great glee in describing how surprised you'd be. And... Yes, yes, I can imagine. If there are any questions you wish to ask, why... I think not, Mr. Andrews. Yeah, very well. Oh, yes, yes, there's one question. When, when will I come into the estate? Oh, almost immediately, I'd say. I hope this bequest will bring you much happiness, Miss Livesey. Happiness? Why, well, yes, perhaps it will. Perhaps it will. Well, this is a surprise, isn't it, Ellen? Sheila's death has brought you a double benefit. Now you're thinking more than ever of Paul. And now that you've become moderately wealthy, why shouldn't you put your money to good use? The clothes you've never had, a new, bigger apartment, a chance to make Paul Carroll notice you. But instead of Paul, across the luncheon table from you, you find Glenn Reed. You're looking awfully attractive, Ellen. New hat? New everything. I felt guilty about it all until it was all the time I was splurging. Yet I knew it was exactly what Sheila would have wanted me to do. Why did you invite me to lunch, Glenn? I had to talk to someone. The police still haven't made any arrests. They won't arrest anyone the way they're going about it. It wasn't any sneak thief who killed Sheila. What makes you so sure of that? It couldn't have been. It had to be somebody else. That isn't enough to go on, Glenn. You'll need evidence of some kind to make the police change their mind. I don't have any evidence, but I have a pretty good hunch. You mean you suspect somebody? Paul Carroll. Oh, now, Glenn, that's ridiculous. Is it? You know Paul can't be guilty. He was at a movie when it happened. The police even found an usher who remembered But him. that doesn't mean anything. He could have sneaked out a side exit soon after he went inside. Nobody remembered seeing him come out. But what motive could he have? Why would he want to do because it? Because he found out he wasn't named in Sheila's will. He was counting on her money. Then he found out how she really felt, so he killed her. But Glenn, by the same token, I'd have a motive for killing her because I knew I'd inherit her money. But you didn't know you were named as her heir. Oh, yes, uh, that's true. Besides, we know neither of us killed her. Carol's the only one who had both the motive and the opportunity. Glenn, he was at that theater. Oh, so he says. Well, what are you going to do about it? You're going to go to the police? I don't know yet. 
All I know is I won't let Sheila go unavenged. I'm going to find out who killed her. And when I do... Please don't do anything rash. Now promise me you won't do anything you might regret later. Promise me, Glenn. I'm not promising anything. Oh, don't tell anybody what I've just said. I'll take care of this in my own way. Well, Ellen, this might be dangerous to your plans. Suppose Glenn does do something to Paul Carroll, the man you love. But wait, Ellen. Suppose Paul did kill Sheila. You wouldn't want the murder of your best friend to go unavenged, would you? Or would you? Love is a very strong emotion, even when it's one-sided. You haven't seen Paul for weeks. He hasn't called you up at all. Never mind. Now you have an excuse, Ellen. An excellent excuse for seeing him. You like my hat, Paul? Hmm? Oh, yes. Very nice. It's the very first time I've worn it. <laughs> oh, is it? You've never noticed anything I've worn, have you, Paul? What? What makes you say that? Oh, oh no reason. Why did you want to see me, Ellen? Oh, because we... We both loved Sheila. And because I haven't seen you since this happened. Well, I meant to call you and congratulate you on inheriting her estate, but somehow I didn't get around to it. Well, shall I consider myself congratulated now? <laughs> if you like. You've changed, Paul. You're not the same at all. Maybe I've good reason for it. Were you so much in love with her? I don't know. What does that mean? Well, you knew Sheila as well as anyone. You know what she was like. She was beautiful and capricious, unpredictable, provoking. Mm. You found that out in 15 years. I knew her for six weeks. During that time, there were hours when I adored her and moments when I could have killed her. <laughs> oh, that's not a very good choice of words, is it? I know what you mean, Paul. Now she's gone... My world's pretty much upside down. And yet if she'd lived, I don't know how long we'd have lasted together. Were you really going to get married? Well, I'd have persuaded her to. Then we'd probably have split up in no time, and I'd have been just as broke as I am now. But you don't sound as if you were really in love, Paul. I'm not trying to kid anybody, Ellen. I'm just telling you how I felt. Glenn Reed doesn't think you were in love with Sheila. Yes, I gathered as much that day at police headquarters. He thinks you killed her, Paul. Well, that's insane. What's the matter with that idiot? Is he going around spreading that kind of gossip? Oh, no, I don't think so. He told me about it yesterday, though. That's the real reason I wanted to see you. I thought I ought to warn you. Has he gone to the police? Oh, he said the police wouldn't believe him. You bet they wouldn't. But please be careful, Paul. Please don't take any chances. Don't worry. I'll talk to him. Get him straightened out. Oh, no, please don't go near him. No, that might only stir up trouble. And if anything happened to you, Paul... Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I didn't mean to betray myself. I mean... Oh, it's shameless of me to talk like this. But I'm free to tell you now. I'm in love with you. And if anything Ellen, happened... Ellen, don't. If anything at all happened to you... I could never tell you before. Sheila was my dearest friend. But just like Sheila... The first time I saw you, I fell in love with you, too. Now you know. Oh, I'm a fool for telling you this way. But I don't care. I have money now, Paul. We can share it together. I'm not ashamed of myself. I'm proud. I just... I want to stand up here and tell everyone. Everett, Ellen, I, I think we'd better go. Oh, Paul, please. Please let me finish. Uh, it wouldn't do any good, Ellen. Oh. I'm sorry. I don't know what else to say. There's nothing else to say, Paul. Shall we go? Unrequited love, Ellen. Yes, you can go on hoping, but deep down inside, you know he meant it. He'll never love you. The anguish and torment of that thought gives you many a sleepless night. You go on hoping... But as the days go by, you need more than hope. You must see him, hear his voice. 
Well, then forget your pride, Ellen. You did once before. Hello? Oh, hello, Paul. I want to apologize for my stupid behavior last Wednesday. I wanted to call you before, but I couldn't muster enough courage until now. <laughs> oh, no, no, there wasn't anything else you could say. Well, that's awfully sweet of you. Can't we make amends? Well, perhaps if we had dinner together some evening. Oh, I see. Yes, 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 of course. Well, if you'll call me when you get back. Yes, Paul, yes. Goodbye. When you get back. When you get back. Hello, hello, operator. Operator, we were cut off. No, 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 it's all right now. Oh, hello, Paul. Someone must have cut in. I just thought I'd call and see I... Oh. Oh, I see. Well, I thought now that you're back, you... All right, Paul. Yes, I understand. Goodbye. Too busy. Oh, Paul. I hate you, Paul Carroll. I hate you! You never thought you'd say those words, did you, Ellen? You didn't remember that love is an emotion very close to hate. But now you know. Paul Carroll doesn't love you, never will love you. He's avoiding you. He's too busy. You hate him now, don't you, Ellen? You're going to take that hate out in action. Something drastic, aren't you? Hello, Glenn Reed? Oh, hello, Glenn. This is Ellen. Yes, yes, I know. I haven't seen you for ages. But I see you tonight, Glenn. Really important. About Paul Carroll. No, no, I can't tell you now. Can you come to my apartment tonight? Oh, say, 8 o'clock? All right, I'll be expecting you. Yes, you're going to do something drastic, aren't you, Ellen? So you work fast. And you're ready when Glenn arrives at 8. Why, hello, Glenn. Do come in. Thanks. You haven't seen my new apartment before, have you? No, I haven't. It's pretty swank. Said you had something to tell me about Paul Carroll, Ellen. What is it? Well, please sit down first. You make me uncomfortable I standing think I'll that stand. way. What's happened? Well, it's a little hard to tell. Especially after I wouldn't believe you. My suspicions about Carroll, you mean? Yes. I, um, I saw Paul several weeks ago, just before he went out of town. He acted rather strangely at that time. Then I talked to him on the phone today, and... Well, now I'm glad to think you're all right. Something he said aroused my suspicions. What was that? Well, we were chatting casually, something about radio shows, when Paul mentioned a certain program. And he, he suddenly changed the subject. Later, I realized why. He talked about a program that was on the air while he was supposed to be at the theater the night Sheila was murdered. Are you sure of that, Ellen? Well, I wouldn't have called you if I weren't. First, I thought of calling the police, but then I could see the evidence would seem so flimsy to Captain Hazlitt. Yes, you're right. If, if we could see Paul alone, just the two of us with him and trick him into confessing. Oh. Well, I could invite him to the apartment tonight. I'd tell him you're here, and then when he arrives... That wouldn't do any good, Ellen. I think it would. I'll give him a ring. I wouldn't do that, Ellen. Nonsense. We both want to avenge Sheila's death, don't we? But if you'll only listen to me... Oh, always making that mistake. I keep dialing Sheila's old number. Oh, good heavens, that startled me. <laughs> hello? Oh, well, hello, Paul. I was just about to call you. Yes, I wanted to invite you over. Oh, don't say you can't come. Well, I suppose I could. Mm-hmm. All right, Paul. Yes, I'll be there. Goodbye. Well, that wasn't hard. He won't come here, but he'll be glad to see me at his place. We won't expect to see you with me, so we may be able to surprise you. I don't think so, Ellen. Why not? We're not going to visit Carol. I thought we'd agree. Let me have the phone, Ellen. Well, Glenn, what in the Let world? Let me have it. Really, Glenn? Very well. What in the world are you... Glenn, I demand an explanation. Why don't you answer it? 
Oh, there's no use stalling, Ellen. I watched you dial. You see, you didn't dial Sheila's old number. You faked that call to Carol. That's absurd. I don't know what you're talking about. Don't you listen. There's nobody on the line, you see. Because the four numbers I just dialed make your own phone ring. You didn't talk to Paul Carroll just now. Really, Glenn, I'm not going to sit here and you let you tell... You couldn't have talked to Carroll. I know that, Ellen. You see, I've already killed him. The Whistler will return in just a moment with the strange ending of tonight's story. Meantime, I promise to give you the scientific reason why new post-war signal is the gasoline you can prove is superior. Why it actually has quicker starting, faster pickup, higher anti-knock, plus the economy of more high-gear miles. Well, you see, gasoline is composed of countless different hydrocarbon molecules. In pre-war gasolines, the molecules were left just as nature made them. But under the impetus of war... Chemists found how to take the molecules themselves apart, actually how to rearrange the atoms within the molecules. The result is the thrilling, amazing power of Signal's new gasoline, bringing you performance so immediately apparent you can feel it, see it, hear it. Make it a point this week to drive into one of the friendly stations displaying Signal's familiar yellow and black circle sign and say, fill her up with new Signal. When you touch your foot to the accelerator and feel that old motor get young again, you'll know why New Signal is the gasoline you can prove is superior. And now, back to the Whistler. The unexpected can be a physical blow, can't it, Alan? Almost like the promise of death itself. Glenn's words completely upset your elaborate little scheme. You stand in horror as it crumbles about you. Glenn, you can't be serious. I can't believe it. Oh, yes. I've been following him for weeks because I thought he'd killed Sheila. I saw the two of you in that restaurant several weeks ago, and I saw you go into his apartment earlier this season. Oh, no. No, you couldn't. I went in after you left. He was sitting in his chair, his back to me. Crept up behind him, a heavy metal lamp from an end table in my hand, and then a... Well, no one saw me go in or out of his flight. Oh, Glenn, you fool. You fool. I came here to tell you about it before giving myself up, but then you faked that call from him. It puzzled me at first, but not now, Ellen. Ellen, you faked that call from Sheila, too. You killed Sheila, oh, Glenn, listen. You? Listen to me. Let me explain. Listen to me. I know you killed her, but why? How could you do it? Because she'd always had everything I didn't have. Money, beauty, popularity. And then Paul came along, and she got him, too. I couldn't let her take him, so I... Yes, I killed her. I killed her. And then I made my own phone ring while you were with me. I learned how when I was an operator. So you killed Sheila, your friend. Knowing all the time I talked to you about her that night that she was already dead. If it hadn't been for you, I wouldn't have killed Carol. But Lynn, let me tell you. You didn't kill him. He was already dead. You killed him, too. Don't come near me. I I shot him, and I made it look like suicide. As if he'd killed Sheila. We'd both have been avenged if you hadn't meddled. You meddled. We'd have gotten away with it. You won't get away with anything again, Ellen. What do you mean? Ellen, what do you mean? What are you, what are you doing? I told you if I ever found Sheila's murderer, I'd avenge her. Dread! No! 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 Next Monday at 9 o'clock, The Whistler will bring you another strange tale. The Whistler is broadcast for your entertainment by the marketers of Signal Gasoline and Motor Oil and fine quality automotive accessories and by your neighborhood Signal dealer. This program directed by George W. Allen with tonight's story by Leslie Edgley, music by Wilbur Hatch, is transmitted to our troops overseas by the Armed Forces Radio Service. This is Marvin Miller speaking and suggesting that you try New Signal. The new gasoline you can prove is superior. 
CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. That concludes today's episode. We'd like to thank you and remind you to donate at choiceclassicradio.com. Remember, your donations make episodes like this possible.